Thank you, dear. Uh, uh, enough, enough. Okay, um, <laughs> I'm going to do um, a couple poems. Yeah, okay, the first one um, is called Hash Joint. Yeah. <laughs> I got paid today, so straight away I called my dealer to get some niceness. It had been a long day and I needed the healer of her. The sound of the lighter and that very first toke was enough to provoke the chance of ancient proverbs, pounding my senses. I've been patient for the release of when my body and mind are tenses. Drop your pretenses and enjoy it. No need to be coy around spliff. It can lift you into a passing cloud or make you a part of the grass that you are smoking. So high you'll be choking on all of the slapdash hash inducing the irrelevant vocab your thoughts are producing your mouth to speak. Yeah. But no. Okay, the reason I wanted to do that one first is just to show that I'm not always really full on because, yeah, some of my poetry is really full on. Okay, um, so this one is basically about an ex. Um, some people have told me that it's quite bitchy, but I don't know, I didn't think it was bitchy at first, but the more I listen to myself say it, it is a bit, so, yeah, but he's not here, so it's fine. Okay, um, this one is called Heartache um, Equals KMT. Okay. I felt hedonistic today. Um, I was feeling hedonistic today, no longer pessimistic about the way we split or the way we broke up, so I set out on my way out. I was even dancing the day after we finished. I saw in the mirror that my life was fine without you on the other side of that heart-shaped door that we all st stand ringing. I was singing along to my favourite song while you were still bringing yourself to the realisation and I got a kiss without much conversation. I might have had three kisses, or four, maybe more, but you can be sure the person I was kissing wasn't you. I'm still no longer missing you. Making my way to the door of the club float, making my way to the door of the club floating, I turned to the wall to stub out the spliff you never wanted me smoking. You must have been joking when you told me to give up. I'd rather give up on us, to be honest. I found that love did not quite live up to my expectations. I don't mind losing those fortnightly invitations into your bed. When around you, my sense of humor meekly stayed caved and caged inside of my head, dead and buried. <laughs> Sipping on my Coke and JD, I even took the thought about taking an E. That's something you definitely would have hated. Something you would have slated me for doing, Mr. High and Mighty, Mr. Mature. When the fact of the matter is that you bored me. Why did it take so long for me to see that you were not the one and we did not belong together, baby? That's why I used to call you simply for the sake of it. When you showed me your true colour, I did not know what to make of it. I found that I needed a permanent break from you and I knew that it was bound to break your heart. So with my iPod on repeat, I hate this part right here. Knowing I had to tell you made me feel sad, although I admit I felt less bad that your friends were with you to give you support. Even though later on that night it turned out just like I thought it would. When you got home and was left all alone, finally in your comfort zone, you called me crying and my tears my, and my ears got soaked by your tears that were seeping through my phone and I was keeping my head up so I wouldn't choke on this guilt that I just couldn't stop bleeding. This is something that needed doing a long, long time ago. But now I'm free again, free to be me again. If I want to go and blaze a tent with my friends, then I can. If I want to have sex with different men, then I can. From now on, I do what I say, not what you say. And there is no way that we are getting back together, whether you fall on your knees or scream until you make yourself sick. Being with you has taught me to pick carefully next time a guy wants to stick around. Onwards and upwards is the way that I'm going and there are still no signs of me showing that my heart is aching. I'm sorry it's took or it's taking so long for your heart to stop breaking, but you see, I never meant to hurt you. I just needed to be free. Thank you. I don't think that's a change. <laughs> um, okay, for a long time. Um, I think a few people here have heard this poem already, um, but this is about um, Haiti. Yes! Um, Nadine's got it. Um, yeah, this poem was about Haiti. Um, because, yeah, I felt, I don't know, I, when it happened, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this has happened to Haiti. Like, out of everywhere it could happen, like, why here? And I just felt, because I'm quite spiritual, I felt, oh, this is obviously, like, a message. Like, the world is supposed to take notice of this. And it did for a few months, but now people have forgotten. Because now, now the election's happening, people aren't still dying, apparently. But, um, yeah, so this is hope for Haiti. Um, the earth is shaking as plates and discs and skulls are breaking. And terror and devastation is all that is left for eyes to take in. And what they're inhaling is no longer air, it's the stench of despair that never tires, as each one respires, exhaling nothing but death instead of breath. 
For the rest of the world, life goes on. While people are still singing the song to celebrate birth, the people of Haiti are on both knees praying for those fortunate on earth to consider their worth and hear their pleas. Please. If it isn't too much trouble, could you help me save my children from under the rubble, or is that not enough reason to burst your westernized bubble? I'm sorry I spoke. As if their words would be enough to provoke a true token of sympathy or human compassion. Their need for the passion of another, reaching out to touch somebody, anybody's hand. I don't understand why it had to happen to them. A population of poor people persevering through pressure applied by us, are they expected to trust in a phony politician with propaganda piercing eyes, a phony politician who lies about their corruption? Revolution is a pending eruption, but for now it's their domain, gaining their wealth at the price of the democracy slain. Save a slice for the poor. The rain showers of opportunity only pour upon the houses of the rich. The fat cats at the top say that life's a bitch, but that's easy to say when you're living this way, but try living with hope when everything you own has been taken away and all you can do is pray. How would you cope? Left with nothing but the fear of death, the will to survive and nothing else to lose. You pay your Sky HD bill and keep on weeping for the pain of your brand new shoes. A headlining spot on the 10 o'clock news is not a long enough slot to sing away the Haiti blues. They don't have the choice to choose their own fate, but we could hoist them upon our shoulders and we could donate what we don't need. We could feed a whole starving town if maybe we could just cut down on our excessive requirements. The consumerist environment we created for consumers buying simply for the sake of it. Why don't we bake Haiti a cake and let them eat it? Or will it be a repeat of New Orleans? No support except from charity singles, climbing the charts but never really touching our hearts, raising their singers' endorsements. Why can't we report on the idle governments who have the power to save but would rather leave the third world as their slave? The natural disaster that struck to cause further destruction was a stroke of luck for the world leaders to fuck them up even further. Hallucinating that Mother Nature is actually on their side, can they not see that the universe is trying to provide us with a warning and we need to take heed for an apocalypse is dawning? Can nobody see what it's trying to say? If we carry on living this way, we will pay for it. We are not getting it right. If we try to fight the earth, it will win, giving in to the eighth deadly sin of capitalism. The time has come to unite as one and realize the damage that we have done. Come together and save the people that we have depraved and end inequality because if we don't, Mother Earth has proved that she can move us from our pedestal and she will. If Haiti won't make us repent, then what will? Humanity thinks it's invincible, but at any moment it could all be over. A moment of silence. Cool. And then this one, um, yeah, it's one of our pages actually. Um, I haven't said it in a while, so I don't forget. Um, yeah, it's called Love Actually. Yeah. Love Actually. They said that love actually is all around, but what I find is that you are nowhere to be found and I'm left lying on the cold, hard ground, crying out your name. You'll never guess who sat small, back curved and resting on a sofa that needed replacing, an immensity inside that needed facing, and drained and gutted is the shell in which I hide my face from the light and shade. You painted on my sheets in an ink that fades, you calling me by my family name. And this is how I saw past your broken Cupid's arrow that shattered my heart because I thought that we could never part without me malfunctioning. I'm going overboard and you can no longer save me. Your anchor has rusted away and now I decide whether I stay afloat or not. My contents have been poured out and I must make sure that you are kept out of my sight for when I see you I get this irritating, penetrating urge to jump off of cliffs at night. I wonder how your bones would sound as they hit the ground. And here beneath the water, it feels so strange the way the light reflects beneath the water. Thank you. Oh, bless, I don't mind. Yay. Yeah, bless, bless, bless. bless. <laughs>